Hey everyone, this is Chris Crazy House. If you are in the Atlanta area next weekend on March 14th and 15th, please come by and see me. I will be at the Atlanta Sci-Fi and Fantasy Expo at North DeKalb Mall. I'll be selling all of my products from my coloring books to my comic books, as well as some posters and stickers. So please come by my table and check me out at the Atlanta Sci-Fi and Fantasy Expo at North DeKalb Mall. That will be on March 14th and 15th. So that's Saturday and Sunday. And I've heard good things about this convention. This will be my very first time going to this convention. And But people have told me great things about it. I do know the organizer. He runs a comic book shop and has run one for, for several years in Atlanta. So he's an Atlanta business owner. And he also was an editor at the Terminus Media comic book company so I, I want to say thank you to him for giving me this opportunity and like I said if you're in the Atlanta area I will see you there next weekend March 14th and 15th at the North DeKalb Mall at the Atlanta Sci-Fi and Fantasy Expo anyway Chris Crazy House signing out peace hey everyone this is Chris Crazy House here and I want to talk a little bit about that new movie Onward which is uh, Disney slash Pixar 3D animated movie that will be out pretty soon. And first, first let me let me preface this before I get in here because uh, some of the things I might say sound negative, but let me say this: the movie looks good and it looks well animated. Even the story itself seems to, or the plot seems to go along just fine. My issue is rehashing the same type of movie over and over again as far as animation goes. Because, I, like I said, I've been in the animation industry. Like, I remember starting as an intern back in 90... Was it 99? No, I think it was actually 2000. I, I had done my first animated... Uh, movie or or not movie but anime is short back in 99 but I I've been working I worked as an intern in 2000 2001 and started working in the industry since then so I've seen the progression of them putting out these different 3D animated movies and they really have not changed plot wise since the days of Toy Story and Shrek like those were like the two big ones as far as like those two major studios of uh, Pixar and DreamWorks. Nothing has changed since then. Okay, and what I mean by that is you have these stories that are basically what they do is they take some sort of fantasy element or some sort of element that is has nothing to do with human beings and they make it so that these these beings live in the real world or, or 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 live a real life type scenario. What I mean by that is okay, let's say you got Toy Story, they're toys but they act like regular people. You got Shrek. Shrek is about a, a troll that lives in a swamp. You got talking donkeys, you got all these fairy tale elements, but they all talk like and act like regular people and they have these uh, modern references, whether it be the music or how they talk. You have movies like, I don't know if anyone ever remembers the, the Bugs Life and Ants. You got these insects who, they're insects, but they have a regular community like normal human beings do. You got cars, same thing. Uh, car, they're cars, but they have a normal human type talk, uh, speech, and they interact just like people do. Even stuff like The Incredibles, which is supposed to be somewhat of a superhero movie, it focuses more on them, their normal family life than it does the the superhero aspect. Now, it was very action-packed, and I enjoyed The Incredibles, but you still have this element of, we're going to take something that's fantasy-based, which is, if you look at Onward, is completely based in the fantasy world, but they all act and interact like normal human beings do. Like, the two main characters are... <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if this will be trolls or orcs or whatever, but they're two brothers living with their mom. Their dad had disappeared. 
and they're trying to bring their dad back with this magical staff, and they decide to go on this quest to bring their dad back so that they can see him and get to know him. It, it, like I said, it's just like, I'm tired of these films, what I what I call faking the fantasy. Instead of that, that term, faking the funk, they're like faking the fantasy. Like, I, if I want to I see a fantasy movie, I want to see a whole real fantasy movie. Like, give me something like the Final Fantasy movies that came out, whether it be even, what was that first one? Was the the Spirits Within or Advent Children or King's Glaive? I, I would rather see something like that. Like, I want to see an actual fantasy movie, and I know the reason they don't do that is because I guess fantasy movies don't do as well in the box office. We've seen it with when they made that World of Warcraft movie, that didn't do well at the box office. Or even within the context of a larger universe, like the like the Thor movies, if you look at the Marvel movies, the Thor movies started out as fantasy movies, both Thor and Thor 2, The Dark World. And then by the time we get to Thor 3, I guess it's somewhat a fantasy movie, but they pretty much made it a comedy, which I did not like, okay? I know this is going to be sound controversial, but I did not like Thor Ragnarok. When I first heard what the story was going to be, I thought it sounded, I thought it sounded like a very cool idea. Bringing the Hulk, have some World War Hulk story elements within this, and have a, a very cool Ragnarok story, like something from the classic Jack Kirby comics or whatever. That's what I thought they were going to do, but it was not that at all. It was just a pure comedy movie that just happened to have some superhero elements. Like I said, I know that's not a popular mindset because everyone seemed to love Thor Ragnarok. I did not like it, okay? Even the things they had the character Thor doing were completely out of character for that for Thor to be doing. He was saying things that didn't even make sense in the movie. It's like I was like, okay, is this supposed to be Thor, or is this just Chris Hemsworth making jokes throughout the movie? It wasn't. It was not the character they established through both the Thor movies and the Avengers movies. Okay, it, it was not. They, and they, they just seemed like they didn't care, and they just seemed to go over everyone's head too. Like no one complained about that. I was like, this is not the character you set up in all these different movies. I can understand a character having progression, but you just completely do away with the way that character talks and acts. That seems kind of overboard to me some people most people liked it so I, i'm in the minority in that regard but i enjoyed the first thor movies because they were cool fantasy movies i i, I like the the norris fantasy the ice giants and even the the dark elves and everything else i like stuff like that but it seems like in hollywood people don't know how to write that type of content and the only way that they can introduce these elements is either to have fantasy elements in the real world or make it a joke. Like, everything has to be funny. Like, that's the only way anyone's going to accept fantasy nowadays. Like, the last time we saw any real fantasy was The Lord of the Rings, and that has such a large fan base and was successful enough they were able to do it without too much interference. And, and, and really, those films were not... Yes, they were released by Hollywood, but those aren't Hollywood films. When you, when you have Peter Jackson working on something over in New Zealand, completely far away from the Hollywood scene, it's easy for him to make these types of decisions without having to deal with the Hollywood type uh, nonsense. And like I said, it had Tolkien already has such a large fan base; you really can't mess with that. Same thing with. Uh, Game of Thrones. Now, I think Game of Thrones got by because it has a lot of adult themes in it and is also based on European history. So while, like, you can watch Game of Thrones and, and if you didn't see a dragon or a White Walker, you would think you were just watching a historical drama to the point where I thought it was going to be a historical drama when I when they first uh, released it way back when until I, I looked in the bookstore and saw, okay, this is a fantasy book series. I thought that it was just a historical medieval drama. And I think that's the reason why that, that kind of got past everybody. But like I said, that's a fantasy series. But uh, like I said, it just seems to me like when they make these fan with animation, you can do so much. And I remember having this gripe back in 2001. Like I said, you can do so much with animation, whether it be 3D or 2D animation or some combination of the two, 
why is no one out there doing these full-on grand fantasy movies like like the books we all used to read when we were younger, whether it be Conan the Barbarian or uh, the art that you would see from Frank Frazetta. Like, why is no one doing anything like that? Like, the last time that was ever even attempted was when Ralph Bakshi and Frank Frazetta made uh, I, uh, Fire and Ice. I want to see something like that as an animated movie rather than seeing... Like, nowadays, if they made Fire and Ice, everything would be a joke. The character Dark Wolf would be a joke. Uh, people will be ma the the what's the I can't remember what the the main villain's name was, but he'd be making jokes the whole time. He would be a sissy or something like that, and it would just be one joke after another. You would not be able to get any type of enjoyment out of that movie nowadays. That's why I'm almost afraid. Like I heard they want to do a three D remake of it. I'm like, don't do it. But it's uh, Rodriguez wants to do it, so maybe he'll do it justice. But I I'm scared of them trying to remake that because now everything's got to be funny. If you're doing fantasy, and I, I, I'm just tired of that. Let's have an actual fantasy movie that uh, fantasy fans can enjoy. Everything does not have to be funny to bring in the casual viewer, and I think that's the part of the problem. They're trying to bring in these people who don't, who have no love for fantasy, who have no love for comic books, who have no love for science fiction, but they want to appeal to these people rather than the people who are actual fans of this stuff. And that, that's the part of it that worries me is that they, those people are not really fans. And you can see them all through social media when they review these films. You can say, you know, you know for a fact that these people don't actually know anything about the content that they're reviewing. They're just kind of watching the movie and say, well, I don't know what the source material is, but I'm going to watch this and then I'm going to judge it. And they have no context of where it came from. So that's my only gripe with a lot of these animated movies is don't fake the fantasy. If you're going to make a fantasy movie, make a fantasy movie. Don't have fantasy characters running around in regular clothes, living in a, a, a suburb and just going to, you know, McDonald's or whatever. I, I'd rather see an actual fantasy movie. That's just my whole thing. Okay. So I hope everyone understands what I'm saying. Maybe there are some people who agree with me. I'm sure there are people who disagree as well, but even if you disagree with me, you have to agree with the fact that we've seen this movie before. This movie has been done a billion times over in animated features. It's time to try and do something else. Let's try something else rather than just keep rehashing the same type of movie over and over again. Okay? Like I said, we've had we've had bugs act like regular people. We've had fantasy characters act like regular people. We've had cars, planes, toys, superheroes, fairy tales. Uh, whatever you whatever you can think of, we all had these characters act like regular people. Let's have an actually purely fantasy type movie, okay? So you guys let me know how you feel about it in the comments section. Anyway, Chris Crazy House, signing out. Peace.